This is Randy Thompson coming to you live with Trudy Adams and Miss Annie. We're working on our left lead canter now. This is uh, the sticky point with Annie in this part of her training. She's just learning how to stay connected under a dozen times where we've had lessons where we've actually focused on it. Trudy's been doing a great job with her in the meantime. But now you can see a horse that's learning how to go from a green horse type of canter. Keep your hands down, keep your hands down, keep your hands down, keep your hands down. Yeah, keep your hands down. <laughs> Trudy's saying don't be ornery. But this is typical for a horse that's learning how to stay connected at the canter. Good, good. Now soften her jaw on the outside. Soften her on the inside. You, when her nose is up, your rein is actually too long. So slow down the front end by shortening your rein while still asking her to step up into it. And she's not going to understand it because she's still figuring it out, right? I, know. I knew she was going to break. Good, good. That's all right. That's all right. Start another curve. She said that she, what Trudy said was she could feel that she's getting ready to break. When you feel her ready to break, that's when you want to put her on a curve, all right? Good. Outside rein, slow it down until her shoulders come up. So I'm asking her to shorten the outside rein just until she feels Annie's shoulders come up. And she's doing that by adding the outside leg at the same time as the outside rein. It's all right. Go right to a circle. So like most riders, when you're working on the canter like this, you might be able to do... Two minutes at the most of the canter before you get tired. You can see more of Trudy's history on the, this channel, YouTube channel, Randy Thompson Live, by looking in the playlist area under Trudy and Annie. Good. That's all right. That's all right. Start a curve. Because you feel when you change, great, she falls apart, right? So now when you change your gait, do a 10 meter circle to just change your gait. Everything now is going, boy, going to be going back to that 10 meter circle. Good, do you feel the difference? Check for the band, shorten your outside rein, praise her. Good, Keep, that's it, good, good. Yep, good, you're feeling when she's throwing her haunches in. So every time you feel her haunches come in, start his curve. Every time you feel her disconnect, you start the curve. Praise her. Good, Trudy. That's it. That's it. So you might have to start like two steps into a curve when you do your downward transition because you can feel she runs through the aids a little. She's not being bad. That's where you can start setting her up because now she's allowing you to set her up different. Right, right. So what she was saying is that they, other than at first when her first move to the left was pretty disconnected, but that's what it should be at this level of training. We can't expect them to stay connected yet because Annie's still trying to figure this whole process out. She's like most horses. It's like, why should I stay connected between your rein and legs? It doesn't make sense to me. So Trudy's goal is just to simply continue working with her and teaching her that she does want her to balance between the rein and leg softly and it's it is it's interspecies communication it's not easy it does take a little while but you can see that they continue to get better with their process good so remember when you do your transition start it can just be the first two or three steps of a curve all right that's it so you think whenever you do a transition up or down you're just going to do the first couple steps of a curve so you know she'll probably break there, start a curve right there, praise her. Good, good, good. And that's how you can use the feeling of curves and circles to help keep your horse more connected is every time they feel like they're disconnecting or every time you come to change your uh, direction or your gait, you just start them into a curve. It doesn't have to be a full circle until you can feel them pick up your outside seat bone. Good, good, praise them. Good. And they're going to drop a lot at first. She did it on purpose. That's right. So if you can hear Trudy there, she's saying that Annie's probably a little bit shocked or making her canter this much while staying connected. So Trudy can feel that she's breathing more. So this is a very, very intense ex exercise for both the horse and the rider. It's a man. That's right. It is mental. That's right. Her, pick it back up, break, pick it back up. That was nice. Very nice. And could you feel how the circles helped you keep her more connected? 
And that's new to what we've been doing with her canter work. You know, because before we really couldn't get her to turn that way. And now you've got her connected in a different way where you can rebalance her by adding a curve or the beginnings of a curve. That's right. So what she said there was that she feels like she's staying more into connection, especially into the right where she's got the rainbow. That means she's got her back up and her neck is arched a little bit. And uh, that it's true because that's what she's doing. She's working on connecting her more as a training level type of horse for the dressage terminology instead of Annie just going around like a green horse. It's a big change and Trudy's done a great job. Again, you can watch more of their progress and the progress of our other featured riders on the Randy Thompson Live channel. So subscribe today to catch up with our latest training processes or to see the history of everybody.